Hey everybody and welcome to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3 2017. We're back for another year, we've got a lot of great game content to show you and a lot of special guests swinging by as well. But to get things kicked off, we're going to take another look at Super Mario Odyssey. Just saw the video in the spotlight, it's going to be coming out on October 27th really soon and uh, we're going to take a look at some gameplay. I'm Sam from the Treehouse, joined by my colleagues from the Treehouse, Rob, Rob and Scott on the end. And we have some very special guests with us for this segment. We've got uh, the game's producer Koizumi-san and the game's director Motokuro. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us today. So I know um, folks are probably really excited to get in the gameplay, but before we jump in, there were a lot of really cool reveals in that video, and I think folks are going to be really interested in all the different directions that you're taking this game. But at the core, there's really a, kind of a driving philosophy that you've got going. I was wondering if you could tell our viewers a little bit more about that. あの、まず今ビデオ見ていただいてどうでしたか。その何か面白かったところありますか。First, could I just ask you, was there anything you saw in there that particularly surprised you or interested you? I got to say the first time I saw that T-Rex, my heart stopped. It was so exciting. あ、良かったです。あの、今回のあの、ま、マリオはま、テーマは旅になっていて、あの、別の国に行った時の驚きをすごく強調しています。so we have a theme of going on a journey in this game, but we're also trying to give the player a lot of surprises, and I think the dinosaur is a little, really big surprise for most. Mario series is that Mario has the familiarity and the cuteness of it, or 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 the cuteness of it, but we also want to balance that feeling of surprise with some emotional resonance, giving people something that's familiar, that's attractive, that's really cute from the Mario series, and bounce people back and forth between the familiar and the surprising. So we've come up with some play systems to get that across as well. So it's not just a look and feel, but a play experience also. And I'd like to turn to Mr. Motokura to explain that. えっと、So the kind of overall story of this game is, you know, you're going around, you're throwing your hat, you're taking over different enemies and objects and you're traveling the world while you do that. その and we talked about surprise before, but basically the unit of surprise in this game is those power moons. Those always equal a surprise, so you go around, you know, you throw your head at different things, you control enemies, and you find things that are surprising, and that gives you a power moon. All right, on. so let's get into some gameplay. Rob, you're yeah. going to take us into New Dunk City. Right? I am. Uh, first, I'd like to take a quick look at the Odyssey, for which the game is named. Uh, it's the ship that Mario uses to travel the world, and it's powered by these power moons, so you keep needing additional thresholds of them to get onto the next kingdom. And just to show off a little bit of the new moves, obviously there's the hat throw. You can make it stay in place, which is sometimes valuable. It can grab things for you. Uh, there's two kinds of coins, which we'll talk about it a, a little later on. And actually, there in that little dialogue box, we saw Cappy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Cappy is both the, the red hat that he's wearing and also in his native form, he's a white top hat. Uh, and so one other move that's pretty cool is this circular throw. Knocks away everything. But let's get down into the city. And as you saw in the trailer, so there's the, the capture mechanic lets you take over things. It also lets you do fairly exotic things like turn into electricity, travel through wires. <laughs> <laughs> so how did the capture mechanic come about? So when we were making this game, um, what we started out doing was making just a huge amount of different gameplay prototypes. And uh, this capture action was uh, just one of those prototypes. So, you know, it was just one of the ideas that came up, but uh, we worked on it for two or three days, and it just instantly turned into something that was really fun, and we decided, well, okay, this should just be the center of this game. 
I love how much it encourages that exploration and experimentation that I think the Mario games along these lines are so known for when you think about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine. Here we've got uh, so much stuff that just looks interesting, and you're wondering, okay, what will happen if I throw my cap at it? You never really know what's going to happen, so you want to try everything just to see. Yeah, I, I definitely hope my people, while they're playing this game, they just throw their hat at everything and try all sorts of different things. <laughs> Whoops, that was a mistake. Uh, right now, normally, um, if you were following the story path of the game, you'd be talking to Mayor Pauline, who wants you to recruit musicians. There's one there. Um, but we're going to ignore that right now because there's lots and lots of things to do beyond following the main story of the game. Like possess rockets and turn into rockets mm -hmm. and why with mustaches. You do that if you could. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's an interesting note there. So you mentioned Mayor Pauline, and I think our sharp-eyed viewers will have noticed that some of the street signs uh, are references to some Donkey Kong characters. We've got some interesting red girders going on here. I wonder, Kozuma um, Sanamoto Kurasan, if you could tell us a little bit more about this city. It's uh, got some interesting backstory. やっぱりあの、ポリンシチョがいて、えっと、ニュードンクシティというナメがついてると、なんかもっと何かこの都市について説明していただけますか。そうですね。あの、名前もそうですし、ポリンってあのドンキーコングのキャラクターって何かの
でも自分でこういろんなプレーの仕方を探してもらえたらと思うんですけどもそれもスーパーマリオ64やスーパーマリオサンシャインから続くものだと思います。But you know, you found your own way to play it, and like you know, letting users you know play around with the game and find their own ways of doing things. That's something that you know goes goes way back in 3D Mario, you know, in Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine as well. So this is actually one of the two kingdoms that's going to be playable on the show floor. The show floor, of course, isn't open yet, so we don't have folks playing the game at this moment. But I'm really looking forward to talking to folks after they've played it, because I think there's so many different ways to problem solve and find the moons in these kingdoms. I'm not even sure if folks will find everything over the course of the show, but it's going to be interesting to find out how different people approached completing some of these objectives. But the game encourages so much experimentation because yeah. you aren't kicked out of the level when you, every, every time you find a moon. There is no reason not to investigate every little thing you, you can see that might be interesting. There's no time limit. There's no, there's no disincentive. There's lots and lots of cool stuff. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that is a very interesting change that adds, I think, to the immersion in the kingdoms. When you think about Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, whenever you got your, so whatever the collectible objective was, depending on the game you were playing, uh, you'd get bumped out of the area and you'd have to come back in. But here, since you're not going to get booted out of the kingdom when you collect a power moon, there's a lot of encouragement to just oh, go check out that it. weird thing you saw on the horizon because you can still continue with whatever your primary oh, objective no, no, is. No, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, keep, keep on tracking and finding Another way, reason to explore everything is that there's very little dis there's very little punishment for dying. I just lost 10 coins, and you know, there's lots, so and I get to try again right away. Mr. Bito, you coin to try this thing. Oh, good luck. Yeah. It's also worth mentioning that the bullet bills here are coming out with visors on, so they cannot be captured until you knock their hats off, because an enemy with a hat is the scariest thing in this game. <laughs> Fashion is very important in this yeah. game. You gotta be conscious of your headwear. Oh, careful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently this is not my day for this challenge. That's right, third time's a charm, right? Yeah. And if you, if at first you don't succeed, give up on the third attempt. I'm just looking at the space where um, we saw other sections of New Dog City and looking here. Uh, I'm just so impressed with the texture work that's been done. And I feel like every time I see a new build of this game, more and more of these textures are just jumping out at me. It's it's. Really fun to see in person. It is a gorgeous game, and we're gonna we have some other segments later on in the in the stream that are gonna highlight some especially pretty areas. Oh, you got this. Yeah. And oh, oh. while I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed, yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> One thing that we haven't mentioned yet that we probably should talk a little bit about is the fact that you're playing with Joy-Con with the wrist straps attached. Yes. And uh, that's a really fantastic way to play this game. It, of course, supports Pro Controller and other controller options, but you can do so much with the motion controls, and throwing Cappy feels very intuitive. Yeah. I'm going to switch to a, a different uh, section of the game where I show the Sand World, which is also playable on the show floor. So give me just a moment oh, here. Oh, no worries. But I do love that as you're experimenting, and I think we'll see folks doing that on the show floor here, so many of your gestures will affect how Cappy moves that while you're holding the Joy-Con with the wrist straps attached, you really want to just try moving your arms in different directions. Like, okay, I'm going to try throwing up, I'm going to throw down, throw out. But uh, I, I was really impressed by how well that implementation was put into play. Here we are. Yeah. Oh, this place is so pretty. So here we're in the Sand Kingdom uh, in the town of Tostarena. And... Uh, they have a problem now because uh, it's all frozen. Everything is cold for reasons, of course, that Mario will eventually solve. Yeah, actually, uh, if you hang still for a second, we can show his little idle animation when he's oh, cold. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Really cute. <laughs> oh, he's cold. I love oh, the yeah. locals here, too. Yeah, I think he's distracted by the, by the local dancing around, but I think if he's by himself, then he really shivers. Oh, poor Mario. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. One thing, one thing I did want to show off is, so as we mentioned, there's two kinds of coins in this game. And for the, I believe the first time in the main, mainline Mario series, you can actually buy things with your coins. And I wanted to ask the developers how that came up, you know, that currency should be worth currency. So we wanted, you know, coins to be used as coins in this game, actually use them as money. <laughs> 外国に行った時にその国のお金ってすごいなんか印象に残ってないですか。And you know, I think I think you'll agree. You know, if you go to you know a foreign land, one of the things that makes the biggest impression on you is the currency. え、これ使えるのとか思ったりしないですか
you know, you kind of look at it and you think, wait, is this, is this real? Can I use this? And since you know, Mario was going around to all these different kingdoms in this game, we wanted to make sure that there was a currency for each one. And you know, they're, they're collectible items, so you can use them to uh, buy different outfits or buy souvenirs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's always fun to buy souvenirs, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And speaking of shopping, we are now yeah. in Crazy Cap. So there's two, there's two kinds of coins, as we mentioned. Um, the, the purple ones are unique to the, the local kingdom. The yellow ones are, can be used in any shop. Uh, I'm going to buy, because the, the guy at the, at the door said, I, maybe I should, uh, I'm not living up to their dress code. Maybe I should buy some clothes to uh, fit in better. I'm going to buy a, a local sombrero and poncho. And wait till you see how adorable Mario looks. Being adorable, I just love the shopkeeper. Yeah, and their huge stack of hats. It's so cute. And you can see some of the, the souvenirs you can buy there that you can use to decorate the inside of the ship. Nice. And now I'm rocking this look. And let's go try that door again. So my capabilities are the same. You know, I still have, it's still Cappy, even though he's turned into a, a, a different kind of hat now. He can turn into any kind of headwear, apparently. The, uh, exotic superpower. <laughs> and uh, all right, so I go over and talk to this guy. Let's see if you meet the expectations now. <laughs> Ooh, snappy and lively. Snappy and lively. I think what the hat is the one and the poncho is the other. All right. And this is, of course, what the goal I was working toward all this time. <laughs> I love all these little moments of surprise where you never really know what's going to happen yeah. when you, you get into these get in spaces. This room? I don't know. I wanted, to get, I wanted to get in this room so I could play a guitar. You want to get in because it's locked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then we're going to move on to some more traditional uh, 3D Mario gameplay over this direction. Now that you are terribly well-dressed, it's time to go do some exploring. Yeah. And, and Bowser's so footprints, I must be on the right track. <laughs> so notice that by using the motion controls, I can actually use the little homing function on the hat more easily. It is possible with the, the button controls only, but it's much more difficult. All right, the classic Goomba. Yeah. And let's just do a big one for, for that. And yeah. Well, and that's, uh, I guess, something folks are probably noticing here. So you're not capturing those Goomba. It's, it's not every single enemy that's capturable. That's true. Um, you've got to find the special ones. Yeah. And a lot of it's uh, having a good eye and just experimenting a lot with the cap. I think they're a shade bigger, the ones you can capture. But I'm not positive about that. So nice. bullet bills, of course, are useful because you can fly with them. And, and now I've got to very quickly capture my ride back. And with bullet bills, they, you can only capture them for a limited amount of time because at some point they're just going to blow up. Yeah. So you have to be a little mindful of what you're doing. Yeah, you only get so much time bill. with the explosive guys. All right, and then almost to one of my favorite bits in this level. Oh yeah, the, right. the next bit you're coming up to just yeah. blew my mind the first time I saw it. So it this place has these murals that look like they're decorated in this cool old, old school aesthetic. And I'm just gonna go right on in. And I've still got my costume. <laughs> so um, Koizumasana Murakura-san, I think we definitely need to hear a little bit more background about why you added this into the game, because it's so cool, but it's so unexpected as well, I think. Um, so we wanted to make something that would be, you know, sort of a contrast with the 3D stages that you're able to explore very freely in. 2D you know, the 2D, the 2D spaces are kind of more confined, they're more precise, you, you know, it's more like kind of, uh, you know, sort of traditional platforming elements. 
同じステージの中でもそういった違った遊びっていうのを入れたかった。And, but also within the 2D stages, as you can see, we wanted to have a lot of different variety. And of course, you know, with the visuals, we're hoping it's something, you know, the people who enjoyed kind of those classic nostalgic games also get a kick out of as well. So, one thing I'd love to show off when we're getting out toward the end of this space is、um, just how much the music changes when we're transitioning back and forth. Because、yeah. I know we've been chatting, maybe it's hard for some folks to hear、uh, what's been going on here. But if we just pop in and out of that warp pipe, it's a pretty impressive transition when the music、it、changes.、Uh, but there's no warp pipe up here. Just start jumping、so, off. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you can now see that it's more of a naturalistic instrument. So, I'm going to skip ahead. And、uh, show off、uh, the last part of this, this scenario.、Uh, okay, so for that, I will need these wrist straps, people. Always wrist straps? Yes. I'll set to jump in. Okay. Yeah, it's worth mentioning, too, that we're only covering a, a tiny bit of what is in this kingdom. There's so much yeah, there's, more to do and explore. There's just a ridiculous amount. All right, so here we are. This is much later in the level.、Uh, I've still got my snappy outfit, though. And watch these bullet bills transition out of the 2D. And then I'm going to use one to break open this wall. So, another thing that's really handy about the bullet bills as a capture target that you'll see here,、um, when you're trying to target for really precision flying, it's got a little bit of a headlamp.、Ah, oh, no. no oh, oh, I'm doomed. That's okay. <laughs> But it's got a little bit of a headlamp, so you can kind of use、see、that to line、fighting. yourself、yeah. up.、Mm -hmm. It's super handy. That's okay because we get to see this cute little 2D to 3D transition again with the bills. It's so cool. All right. All right, you got this. Yeah. All right, here we go. And with the bullet bills, you can also give yourself little speed bursts as well.、Uh, shaking the Joy Con will let you go a little bit further. So it's worth experimenting once you get a feel for the timing of how long a、yeah. bullet bill will last. It's kind of like driving a car that doesn't have any brake pedal. It, you, can, you can go faster, you can steer, <laughs> but that's all you can do. And, all right, so up here we're about to confront one of the Brutals. And、uh, folks may have seen them in our original、uh, teaser trailer for this game.、Um, they are an evil wedding planning firm.、Uh, and I'd love to hear more from the,、uh, the developers about how they came to be and what your favorite Brutal is. ブライダルズという団体がこのペコンを企画しているグループらしいですけど、はい、なんか一,番一番気に入りのブライダルズは誰かいますかそうですねあの彼らはあのクッパに、えー、雇われてクッパの結婚式を成功させようとしています。So they've, you know, as you kind of said, they've, they've been employed by Bowser. They're in charge of making sure his wedding goes off without a hitch. 結構仕事をきっちりするタイプですね。They're very serious about their work. Like、Their work ethic is admirable. So, in the middle, there is a little bit of 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 a How about you,、uh, Kozumi san? Do you have a favorite? Kozumi san, I'm a little bit of 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 a little bit She has this great contrast between her cute appearance and like, how devilish she is. She's sort of like the、uh, tricky little sister of the group here. Her attacks are really fun to watch as well,、yeah. especially when she starts flying around. <laughs>、yeah. And it's worth mentioning you fight each of the Brutals a few times,、um, but their, their tactics get more and more intense and, and dangerous. Uh, uh. But I'll be honest, having planned a wedding last year, I would take the help of evil wedding planner. Yeah, I mean,、monsters. any evil help is better than no help. <laughs> and they're very dedicated to their work. And they're, they're willing they to fight your enemies for you, and that's pretty great. Oh, nice. There we go. Nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <too bad. laughs> sorry, Harriet. Now she'll be back. 
All right. So that's a grand moon worth three power moons. And there we see Cappy in his natural state yep, as well. There he is, celebrating with Mario. All right, so that's what we have for gameplay for right now. But yeah, we did we have one more little uh, feature, I, I believe. Yes, we've got uh, some new goodies that have turned up here on stage with us. Uh, so these are the amiibo for the game. We've got uh, Princess Peach, Bowser, and Mario in their wedding outfits. And uh, I just need to ask you guys about the development process for these, because the, the detail of the sculpting is incredible. It must have been a very interesting process getting these to the state they're in here. この and you know, then from there, you know, we have Mario and Bowser as well, and we had to make sure that you know, in terms of visuals, they weren't going to lose out. They, they got to keep a, up. Yeah, yeah, they got to keep up. Yeah. Also, the posing, that's the theme, and the character that they have, the character that they have. And you know, another characteristic of these is that the posing is very kind of directly linked with uh, the story and you know what's going to be happening in the game. Yeah, Mario's got kind of a humble bow thing going, and. Bowser's kind of looking like, I, I own the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Bowser looks pretty dapper here, though. Yeah. Um, but it is really amazing. The and I don't know how close we can get the camera here. We got a better look here. But uh, in person, the, the texture, where some of them have almost like a pearlized kind of texture, and there's a lot of subtlety with the, the different kinds of fabric, you can really see um, a lot of nuance uh, for these uh, amiibo. I'm really looking forward to people seeing them in person. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And I wonder, um, at this point, is there anything you'd like to share about the functionality of Amiibo for our viewers? So, the Amiibo no kino say ni tsuite nani ka sete shite dekimasu. Eto desu ne. Eto Amiibo wa ano costume wo te ni ireru koto ga dekitari, ato wa ano game no naka deno otatsuki kino toshite ano katsuyo suru koto ga dekimasu. Um, so you'll be able to use the Amiibo to get uh, different costumes within the game, and then they'll also have kind of a, an assist function. And we do have uh, existing Amiibo that are supported as well. I think we'll be talking more about that at a later point. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think that's all we're allowed to show for right now, unfortunately. Right now. I, we'll be showing more of this game later on yes, in, the, we'll definitely in the stream, of course. Um, but uh, Murakura-san and Koizumi-san, thank you again so much for joining us here and sharing some of the insight about the development process of the game. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, folks who are watching, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be back in a few seconds here with our next segment. So please don't go anywhere. <laughs>